Hi, and welcome to the Luxembourg PVC Stories. Today's episode will be a special one and dedicated to investor relations and fundraising. My guest will be Martin Kerschenmeier. She is Director LP Services at Advent International. Welcome, Martin. Thank you for having me today, Stefan. It's a real pleasure. And before we start, uh, could you give us a quick snapshot on Advent International? Sure. Advent is a global private equity player that was founded in Boston in 1984. And that's where the headquarters are. And today it has over $90 billion in assets under management and has invested over $70 billion in 405 investments across the globe. We have over 580 employees in 15 countries. Did you ever plan to become an investor relations expert or fundraiser? No, that was not part of the career plan. Um, you know, I've always had a genuine in interest uh, to talk to people, to understand what motivates them, to try and find solutions. It was always uh, something that came naturally to me, uh, but it certainly wasn't on the map. To be honest with you, I'm not sure that investor relations fundraising was an actual official role or job when I started my career. So, um, you know, I, I started it in London in investment banking in equity derivatives. Excellent. And uh, could you then uh, share with our audience what the main tasks of those specialists are? Sure. Um, I think that also has evolved. Um, so again, when I started off, um, you know, it wasn't even considered a proper role. Um, so some firms had investor relations people, some didn't, uh, some had something in between. So it's really only after the global financial crisis, I think, that people realized that you can't invest if you don't have capital. So basically that's when it started to professionalize. And the role today you know, has different facets. It depends also on the size and the nature of the private equity firm. But uh, for one, you know, we raise capital. So we manage fundraising processes. We engage with investors. We engage with stakeholders. And then, uh, you know, outside of fundraising, we continue to always engage with investors, either existing, prospecting new ones, make sure that we give them information they need, either regular reporting or ad hoc requests. And, you know, we really strive to be the best in class uh, LP services team. Since you are doing that job, um, what did you study and where did you start your career? So, uh, you know, as I mentioned, so, I, so first of all, I studied law. Uh, so I studied law for six years. I was in Paris for five and then I came to London to study. I did a master's. And while I was in London, I just got really excited about the buzz in the finance industry. And so uh, I started off my career at JP Morgan in equity derivatives and then joined Morgan Stanley in asset management. Initially, I was in a UK sales team, but I was missing the excitement of these more complicated products. So I started uh, working together with the alternatives team at Morgan Stanley. And then when they were uh, recruiting for someone to be a portfolio specialist, so for fund helping fundraising, uh, they asked me to interview and that's how I started off. Initially, it was a 50-50 hedge fund private equity role. And then I decided after a while to move 100% to private equity. Excellent choice, I would say. Absolutely. It's a very tangible, you know, it's, private equity is tangible. It's real companies, real people, and that's what makes it so fascinating. That's one of also uh, the main arguments of our industry, really to work for the real economy <clears throat> together and also to, to create value, which is yeah. very important. Absolutely. Um, the promising profiles in your sector nowadays, what kind of profiles would those be? I think to start with, uh, you need someone who has a genuine interest for people and genuine interest also for maybe alternatives, but specifically, as I said, you know, the engaging with people, uh, seeing what companies do, the real thing. Uh, from a background perspective, having uh, knowledge in finance is very helpful. I personally believe it's something that can be acquired. Um, you know, for example, I, in a prior role at BlackRock, I uh, recruited a lawyer into the team. 
It was a steep learning curve, but he's become a very valuable asset in fundraising for another firm. So I think really uh, any pro profile can do. Soft skills are important. And um, based on your experience, which skills would be important in order to last in this business? Well, there are several. I think several sk skills are required. Uh, it's a combination. Um, so first of all, I said it, interpersonal skills. You need to be able to create a rapport, a relation with people. You need to be able to understand their needs, uh, their motivations. You also need to be good at communicating. Um, you know, private equity is very complicated. You need to be able to explain very complex concepts to people in a compelling manner. And then um, I think that, you know, I mentioned it, finance, having a finance acumen is helpful because it is very complex. You do need to talk to investors about performance, about investments, about what they do. And, uh, and I think uh, persistence, resilience. Fundraising can be difficult. It can be, take a long time. These are relationships that you build over a very, very long time. You know, they're based on trust. People are committing to funds that last over 10 years. So it doesn't happen in one day. It's not just a trade. So you have to be patient. You have to be able to deal with the rejection. Not everybody will commit to your funds. Um, especially when you look at, you know, some of the markets, you know, the, like we've had a difficult, challenging market in the last couple of years. And so, you know, you, you, it, it takes a lot of effort. It takes a lot of, yeah, patience and, uh, you know, keep the motivation going. And the same thing, you know, would be, I'd say, comes together with it is adaptability. You know, the market keeps changing, private equity keeps changing, investors investors' uh, demands or interests keep changing and you have to constantly adapt. And then really, really important for me, I think, is integrity and trustworthiness. You know, you deal with very sensitive information with these investors. Again, it's a long-term relationship and you have to just behave in the highest, you know, trustworthy, integral way. Um, and you couldn't do it without a team. So teamwork and collaboration. We all work together in a team. There's not one person fundraising. There's many of them. And, you know, the role of a fundraiser is also to have people collaborate and with various stakeholders, internal and external. You work with legal teams. You work with the deal team. You work with compliance. And uh, so there are a lot of things that, you know, skills that are important. Equally important, I'd say, even. And it's a great mix of uh, collaborative and also collective intelligence, then. Yeah, absolutely. Um, concerning Advance's decision to also start fundraising in and out of Luxembourg, what yeah. was the rationale behind? And is that the reason why you came back to Luxembourg? Um, so, uh, no, it's interesting because uh, Advance has already got a pretty big operation in Luxembourg. We have over 60 people here. And uh, I myself, although I happen to be in Luxembourg, I spent 25 years uh, outside and I spent 20 years working in private equity in London. So I knew some of the executives from Advan, specifically from the investor relations team from my early days. And uh, so it was literally just a natural combination of them looking to expand and me happening to be back on the ground. So um, yeah, it worked out well. Welcome back and very happy to have you. Delighted to be here. Uh, how quickly could we become a, a more prolific and also visible fundraising hub? Um, you know, I think it's, uh, there's a number of things that, uh, that are important here. First of all, you know, if you think about, well, what type of talent uh, do you want to attract? Um, you can either try to bring people here or you can try to see what you already have here and see if there is a way to reskill, upskill people by bringing them into the fold, right? Um, as I said before, there's no one background that can do this. But what I would say is generally um, the sort of, it's a very small community, the private equity fundraising, investor relations community. Uh, since it's only built up really after the financial crisis, 
Um, personally, I think a lot of the skill lies with English speakers uh, because London and in the US, that's where the, most of the investor relations sit. So, you know, I think just facilitating people to come over, um, be that from, you know, the, the infrastructure we're talking about, it, we hear about it every day, right? It's uh, uh, infrastructure, having schools, uh, you know, international schools for people, having, uh, you know, affordable housing for people, Very important. Um, medical access, uh, but also I think, you know, maybe gearing to make it more attractive to English speaking, uh, you know, uh, professionals, and very importantly, also uh, maybe making bigger efforts to help their accompan accompanying spouses when they come here. Because what we hear all the time is, um, you know, someone's got a job offer in Luxembourg and they would love to take it, but their spouse needs to give up a job in London, in the US, somewhere else, could be even Paris, whichever it is. Um, and they don't have a job to go to, and often it's not straightforward to find something. So, it's a great a list of, of, uh, <laughs> of obstacles yes. we should certainly iron out. Or let's none say, of keep them on are the uh, unsurmountable, right? Yes. So, and very realistic. Okay. Exactly. But yeah. uh, let's say based on those, uh, are there also some opportunities which we could develop here in Luxembourg, um, or incentives? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm, you know, I'm sure there are plenty of uh, different types of incentives that you can, uh, you know, that you can develop. Um, people talk about it, it can be financial, but they can also be sort of like what's on offer, you know. Uh, again, it comes back to the quality of life that people can expect, uh, be able to find their, find their housing, be able to, you know, get their kids into good schools, etc. So lots of different ways of doing that. Quality of life, Luxembourg is also famous for, depending on yeah. your means, your career, and certainly age. Yeah, definitely. How would you see a little bit uh, the job of an uh, IR or fundraiser over the next years? Will it drastically evolve? And uh, for example, could digitalization play an important role or more important one? I think it's becoming more and more uh, professionalized. So more and more firms are actually making it a, a, a real, you know, creating real professional teams. Uh, digitalization will have, will ha greatly help, I think, the role. Um, well, we've seen it in COVID, in lockdown, you know, uh, Zoom became your best friend. Uh, effectively, you know, we've done virtual fundraisings. Everyone's done virtual fundraisings and it worked. It actually made it very, very efficient. So, you know, you have your time allotted. You can talk to many more people. Um, you could argue that there's an element of, uh, you know, uh, sustainability, carbon footprint reduction. Uh, you don't fly out just for one meeting. You might do it over Zoom and you might, you know, but it does not take away from the physical interaction you know that was a bit my next question yeah. is it always still in a people's business as often it highlighted absolutely is and it will remain because again it's this matter of trust uh you know being able to build that relationship over a very very long time um i said it earlier you don't start talking to an investor and expect them two months later to invest into your fund uh you know you you talk to investors sometimes years ahead um, it's, it's really all about planning, it's, uh, it, you know, it takes time. But again, you know, and I was thinking about this earlier, um, ChatGPT, I think, will be a game changer in the industry as a whole. Um, it will help you to, um, to be more efficient by taking away maybe some of those tasks that take you a long time, like drafting some, you the know, inspirational answers, part, you, you know, it's very, you know but, yes. uh, but ultimately that will let you focus more on what's really important, which is the client, the investor, the human personal contact. And the care, yeah. yes. Yeah. Okay, fantastic, Martin. Thanks a lot yeah. for sharing all your insights. We count on you in order to help us as an association and help also to push forward all those tasks and sure. say goodbye and good luck. Thank you. Thank you very much.